Hey y'all, it's your favorite cozy girl, Chi the Reality Queen, and I'm back again with another episode of Rogue Chronicles. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 7, Episode 13, Sisterhood of the Traveling Thieves. This episode, much like a lot of these episodes, they give us a little fluff in the beginning, everything's calm, and then boom, at the end, there's all the drama. So we'll get there. But to start off, you know, this episode started really good. Um, there was a conversation where Robin calls Giselle and Giselle is re leaving her doctor's appointment that she had. She had an appointment with her OB and she's talking about having fibroids in her uterus. Um, I really like this conversation. I mean, obviously I'm very sorry for Giselle and that is a terrible thing to have because they told her that she's gonna have to remove her entire uterus because they can't remove each individual fibroid. Um, but I did love this conversation because I think it's important for women to talk to each other about these things. And I also think it's important to have this conversation on television because not everybody is out there getting their yearly checkups or going to the doctor and having you know, things discovered. Whereas when you see these things happen on your screen, you're like, hmm, maybe I should get a checkup because Giselle, she even said it, I don't imagine myself being the person that gets sick. So her getting sick was shocking to her and it could be shocking to any one of us, you know. I know people who have fibroids. So it's like, you know, something that resonates with a lot of people and the fan base because a lot of the fan base is women, right? So I think it was a really important conversation to have and I'm glad they had it on air. And I actually really hope that we get a doctor's visit. You know, we've gone to the doctor before with the girlies. Um, and I hope that we get one for this just so we can have the doctor kind of give their viewpoint, why it happens, where it comes from. Just that little background that we sometimes get when they go to the doctor so people can hear that, right? And then hopefully it inspires more people to go get a checkup. So I really like that part of the conversation. However, it is not a conversation with Giselle and Robin if there is no shade being thrown. So much like they're used to, they threw some shade at Karen. <laughs> they talked about her live show. They didn't know what it was about. They felt she wasn't featured. And you know what? I'm gonna let them hate because they're just mad because their live show was not packed. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm not saying that Karen's live show had anything to do with LaDom, but I am saying that it was packed and full and people were there having a good time. So whatever shade they have, didn't really matter. Um, also, we see uh, G and Mia talking. And I guess there's a little foreshadowing because she talks about her, her and Jacqueline had a little spat. But I think it's so funny watching Mia work because we all know, like on this side of things, that she said that G's brother took over the whole company and they're broke or something I don't even know exactly what's going on but watching her work it's like girl what are you doing what work because we know there's no business now so but whatever whatever she gotta you know show her she uh self and show that she's a girl boss and you know what more power to her you y'all know I love Mia so I support her from this side um but yeah girl mm-mm um, we also, now this was my favorite conversation. My other favorite conversation actually was Robin talking with Juan about their wedding, um, and the kids. So she's telling the kids like, oh, we're going to have a personal, intimate, you know, wedding ceremony. And instantly her kids are like, okay, well, what about Gigi and Pop Pop talking about the grandparents? And she's like, well, I don't know. And it's like, Robin... Robin Dixon. Robin. Girl, you're not fooling any of us. There is going to be no wedding. We know that. Juan knows that. Maybe the kids don't know that. Maybe they still have hope because they're children. You know, so you trying to pull the wool over their eyes. But you are not pulling the wool over our eyes. There is going to be no wedding. Because if you were really having a wedding, your parents would be there. I get it. People want to have intimate weddings all the time. That makes sense. I'm not against those. I just find it funny that you, of all people, want to do that. Like, it just doesn't make sense. 
like Juan saying he don't want his parents there. I mean, I think his mom has passed and his the guy that he knew as his father passed. And then he met his actual father years after or like shortly after that. So if he says, oh, I don't want my parents there, that makes sense. He don't know those people. But your parents raised you, Robin, and they also raised Juan. So why wouldn't you want them at your union? Unless there's not going to be a union. <laughs> which I mean they said the wedding was supposed to be in July and at the time of filming that was 40 days out we're currently in January of 2023 and I didn't hear about any wedding I mean I don't follow Robin on Instagram very closely so if y'all heard about a wedding and I missed it let me know but I didn't see no wedding but I will say I love that they had that guy come in and size them to tailor them for suits because support black business right because <laughs> he came through he sized them up whether those suits are going to be worn for a wedding between robin and juan or someone else's wedding or someone else's event maybe even to court um <laughs> you know whatever it's going to be used for that's fine but what i know is those suits aren't going to be used for no wedding in july anyway <laughs> moving on we finally, finally get to Ashley's birthday where they're traveling to Mexico and Karen, Wendy, and Ashley travel ahead of time to get everything straight and squared away, which I love because when they travel and stay in hotels, it's just a much better vibe. There's no fights over rooms or space. Like Airbnbs are inherently unequal because houses are built with a master and then other bedrooms. So no one is like someone is always going to get the short end of the stick when you stay in homes or villas or things like that. But if you stay in a hotel, everyone gets the same exact accommodation unless you spring for a suite, which we've seen some women do sometimes. But, you know, I didn't hear that anybody did that this time. Um, so they get there early. They go. They create gifts for everybody and Ashley decides she wants to put little individualized gifts for everyone um besides the stuff that she got for everybody like the same stuff so this is what I saw Karen thought to get something for Sharice even though Ashley forgot now if I hate somebody for real for real like can't stand them I wouldn't do that. I'd be like, F her. If she didn't get something, oh well. But she still came up with the idea and was like, oh, let's get her a bottle of champagne because we know she likes champagne. She didn't have to do that, but she did because Karen is not a bad person. She's a good person, at least in my opinion. So then the other girls start leaving to come. They get to the airport. Um... They get on the plane, everything seems fine, but apparently we find out after they land in Mexico, Jacqueline and Mia got into it on the plane about their kids. Now, this is funny to me, but also interesting because I don't think it's a manufactured beef. I've been talking about that a lot this season, but I don't think it is because they argued in the one place that they knew no cameras were, meaning that she really wanted to get it off her chest in a private place. Of course, it was going to spill over. You're about to go on vacation with the girl, but you definitely can tell that she was trying to have that conversation privately. Um, so they had that argument. They land, they get to the hotel. Karen is like, uh, y'all can't go change. Y'all got to come straight to this room so we can celebrate Ashley because the day that they land apparently is Ashley's birthday. They get to the room. <clears throat> They're having cake, drinking, whatever. And Mia and Jacqueline start getting into it again. Now, their argument is over Mia taking care of Jacqueline's childcare or something. I'm not exactly sure. But Mia's nanny is Jacqueline's sister. So I have like a double mind about this. I want to believe that Mia is right. Your, yes, your sister is my employee and my nanny. 
But that doesn't mean that you could just drop your kids in and have me because I pay her, right? So when you drop your kids in, you're basically getting free childcare. But also on Jacqueline's side, it's my sister. So I should get free childcare from my sister. That like makes complete sense to me. Um, so I, I, I kind of am like, eh, I don't know which side to be on for that. Um, and then also they're friends for a long time. But it does kind of seem that Mia, now that she's in a position to help and take care of Jacqueline, she's done it a lot. And I think maybe she's just getting tired of it. But then also, I feel like she's getting tired of it because the money isn't as long as she thought it was, right? So like, we're looking at a situation where it's like, I'm taking care of you. And girl, when my money was long, it was fine. But now that my money's a little short, hmm, it's not as fine anymore. But you know, we haven't gotten into the whole nitty gritty of that. But what was crazy is Candace and Wendy are the ones sticking up for Jacqueline and trying to get Mia to be nice to her. Like, Candace? Candace? <laughs> she called Jacqueline Mia's spokesperson. And now she's the person trying to have a heart and tell Mia, like, this is your friend. Be there for her. Support her. Don't fight with her. I mean, Candace is doing a really, really good job of being the greatest housewife this season. I don't know how she did it because I'll be honest, she was low on my list before, but she has been trending upward all this season and I absolutely love it. Like she was really there for her. And I was just like, Candace, wow, so much compassion, so much kindness. Like I really appreciated it. I, I love that about her and I love that she's showing the side of her. It's not always just shade, shade, shade. She can be a good person, can be a good friend, and it's really being highlighted this season, and I love it. Um, I wish the best for Mia and Jacqueline, but I, I don't see that getting better until Mia either gets a lot of money again or Jacqueline maybe gets a job. But for her to joke about or make a comment talking about Jacqueline needs to close her legs to married men, <sighs> Mia, how'd you get your husband? You told us. You can't make that comment when you the same person. You can't make that comment. Girl. Come on. Don't do that. Don't do it. But whatever. They'll figure it out because they've been friends for a long time. And like she said, they're like sisters and they fight like sisters. Sisters fight. Sisters make up. So I'm hoping for them that they make up before the season finale. But from what I hear, it hasn't worked out so well. Um, moving on to the finale of it, um, Sharice and Karen. So they get to the table. They've been kind of, it looks like they haven't really interacted up until this point, or maybe they just said their highs, you know, nice greetings, whatever. But finally they're at the dinner table and Sharice decides to address Karen head on. And to me, I feel like if I'm Sharice, I'm just going to leave it alone. But this is television and we know she can't do that. So she starts talking about, why don't you like me? I need you to say it directly. Why you don't like me and straight to my face and this and that. And Karen starts, you know, saying what she's saying. And I don't even know how they got to the point of parents. But Sharice notes that she showed up to Karen's parents' funeral and Karen was saying that she showed support for Sharice when her parent died, that she texted. Um, and I don't know exactly what happened because it started to get really wild. But Karen was like, keep my mama name out your mouth. And you know what, Karen? I agree with you. I am always on the side of keeping people's families out their mouth because you talk about my mama, those are fighting words to me. So I understand Karen. I don't know if what Sharice said might have been fight worthy, but if I already don't like you, you're never going to say anything that doesn't make me want to fight you because I'm already taking what you're saying as offense because I don't like you, right? So I don't like you. So everything you say that even could come off a little bit bad, I'm like, what's up? Let's go. So <laughs> I kind of understand, but they... 
started going back and forth and the episode ends. And Bravo, how dare you not give us a preview? We need to see this whole argument through. I need to know if they come to blows. I just love that everybody, I think people are not used to Karen getting so angry because all the women were literally sitting around like, even Giselle, Giselle was stuck. So needless to say, Sharice pushed that button of Karen's that was just <laughs> way too far. And I cannot wait till next week to see one, the rest of the trip, two, the rest of this fight, and three, how everything, you know, turns out on this trip. Um, I'm really excited and I hope you guys tune in next week to see what I have to see here. Say, see what I have to say here on Rogue Chronicles. Sorry for the tongue twister. <laughs> see ya.